Cairo 7 presents a Seattle Supersonics 40th anniversary special. The golden era of basketball. This, this is a wonderful experience. Uh, there's nothing like winning a championship. You have three things in the world that bring people together. Music, food, and sports. And uh, we saw that here. 1979 was a different time for the National Basketball Association. Dancing Harry, meet the rainbow man. We're talking about high-waisted shorts. Freddie Brown, Dennis Johnson, Jack Sigma, Paul Silas, and John Johnson on the floor for Lenny Wilkins. And when shooting it from downtown, had a totally different definition. CJ taking him. But Seattle reigns supreme and all was well. Four, three, two, one. Let the celebration begin in Seattle. It is over. June 1st, 1979. The Seattle Supersonics won their only NBA title, ending a six decade championship drought for professional sports in Seattle. Last play of the game, game clock winds down, you throw the ball up in the rafters. What's the, what's the thought? On the, on the bench and on the floor. First of all, that was a bad move. If I knew how important that and valuable. Ball. That valuable. I would never threw it out like you that. You never saw it again? No, no. no. In 1917, the Seattle Metropolitans became the first American team to win hockey's Stanley Cup. Fast forward just over a century now. Hockey is returning to the Emerald City, and the NBA could be next. Hello, I'm Steve Rabel. From the championship game, to the trophy presentation, to the parade through the streets of downtown Seattle. It has all been preserved in the Cairo 7 archives, just the way it was broadcast back in 1979. And now, 40 years later, it is time to open the vault and relive those glorious times for this supersonic special, the golden age of basketball. When I got here and I met the people and I saw what this city was like and what it could become, uh, I really fell in love with it and wanted to do everything I could to help it be successful. You know the names well. Freddie Brown, Jack Sigma, Paul Silas. But when you think of the Seattle Supersonics, it starts and ends with the Hall of Famer. Lenny Wilkins. I told the players that I wanted to make some changes, that I, I really believe that we could win, and I truly believe that. And the, the rest became history. That same history we celebrate today. Everything just went together. And these guys supported one another, you know. That I, I thought Lenny put together a, a wonderful mix of young players with some veterans. I mean, Fred and JJ and Paul have been around for a while. And uh, I just remember it was always very competitive practices. I thought, uh, I, I don't know if I've ever been on a team that got better as, as much in their practices as we have. We had guys stepping in every day and going at each other and trying to get better. It was better, but things weren't good before he came. <laughs> we, we were bad. <laughs> <laughs> Five and 17, terrible record. But we're getting killed. It's not just when we've got a bad record. We're not in games. And I like, looked at the players in the room and said, I got confidence you guys. You guys are good players. We're going to have a good team. We're like, I'm not saying, is there somebody else behind us? You know, you know, are, you, are you talking to us? But he gave us confidence in a way that we didn't think we were any good, but it changed that. Everybody, everybody knew their jobs. Yes. Everybody oh, yeah. knew their responsibility. It was, it was outstanding. Yeah, and, and, and that's another beauty that Lenny had. And think, remember this. Everybody on our team knew everybody's assignment and where they were supposed to be on what cadence that we did it. So if there was a mishap, then we knew what was supposed to be there. Right. <laughs> well, first of all, anything Fred was saying, take with a grain of salt. Okay? <laughs> but it's, I've been listening to you guys. It's been great. I think the thing that really separate us from most teams, and I don't know if there was a scientific study of this, but if you like your teammates, or you have certain bond with your teammates. Does that necessarily mean, does that translate to winning? I don't know, but it didn't hurt us. I mean, I knew they knew exactly what I was talking about. Yeah. We prepared. 
like uh, Jack was saying, I, I practice this. Uh, we worked on stuff. Come on, oh, you know, oh. you talk about uh, if we were going to trap or rotate or whatever, everybody Very knew cool. what they were supposed <laughs> to do. I mean, our yeah. practices, Steve, I'm telling you, Gus and I, we would enter the pass into these guys, Lonnie and Paul, oh. or, 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 or Jack yeah. or Dennis or somebody. I mean, these guys were going at it. Our best games were in practice at, at 12 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> they were just beating the crap out of each other. So we knew, like, man. I mean, remember we used to stand out there saying, these guys crazy or what? <laughs> the Sonics' run to two straight finals began when Lenny Wilkins returned to the Sonics as their coach early in the 1977-78 season. They won 42 of their final 60 games before making a deep push into the playoffs. The Sonics upset the NBA champion Portland Trailblazers, beat the Denver Nuggets, but eventually lost to the Bullets before a sellout crowd in Seattle in Game 7 of their first NBA Finals. Then in 1979... team overcame tremendous adversities during the year. And to me, that's a mark of character. I think that it showed that this team was a totally different team than a year ago. A year ago, everything was done on emotion. This year, it's done on experience, on confidence, and also on character. I think the key game for us, or the thing that really put us in the right uh, mental frame of mind, was the game that we played right at the end of the season against Los Angeles. We went down there, we played them right at the time when they were playing excellent basketball, and we beat them on their home court. Five seconds. Five seconds. In the series against Phoenix, this was probably our toughest series, and. And I would say that this series was the one that had to be the turning point in us winning the championship. We could talk about that sixth game against Phoenix over and over again, and we still wouldn't get the significance of how important it was. And one of the key things of that game was the play of Paul Silas, who uh, gave the team the emotional lift that it needs. Sometimes uh, it has to come from the players with, within themselves and not the coaches. We can prepare players and uh, get them ready for the game, but sometimes your peer Someone among you has to be the guy that gives you the lift. And Paul Silas was not going to let the Sonics lose that game at all. I mean, he was going to do everything possible to win. But the Sonic lead is a two. Set with 31 points. Shoots. He makes it. 115 to 110. Seattle leads by three. Second shoots. He hits. 114 to 110. The Suns no timeout. From that point on, uh, when we won that seventh game, we felt that all we had to do was go out and play the way we're capable of, and we could win the world championship. So now we leave the Phoenix series knowing how close we came to losing. It taught many lessons, and it also got us ready for the championship series against the Washington Bullets. The rematch, a year in the making, but the Sonics would leave no doubt about it this time around. Elvin will take it low, turn on, Sigma misses. Loose, run down by Dennis Johnson. On the dribble, he got past right. Henrich comes with him. Dennis comes in with a field goal, and he's fouled. Score it for DJ Dennis Johnson out of Pepperdine. It's game five of the NBA Finals. We begin period number four, 69-66. The Supersonics lead the series three games to one, but trail the Washington Bullets all game until late in the fourth. Here are Brent Musburger and Rick Barry on the call. JJ comes out. Round maneuvers. Eight on the shot clock. Seven hanger. Seattle leads for the first time. Freddie's like a pitcher in baseball. He's got so much junk, you never know what's coming up. There's Freddie Brown a moment ago, that leap and leaner shot. He actually wanted to pass the ball. CJ backed up and he leaped in and banked it right off the glass softly. 
beautiful down the stretch, and this one is shaping up the same way. And as Johnson across the timeline now, sends it to John, then lob into Sigma. Unsell, pawn, scratching, clawing, and Sigma hits two. He didn't even hit the net with that shot. Seven minutes and 35 seconds now left in game five in regulation time. Downtown, two more. Put him up for Freddie. Allard assigned to him. Inside back door to Dennis. Turns on Dandridge and puts down two more. Dennis Johnson has played an unbelievable series. 16 points now for DJ. CJ taking him. Downtown, put it in and he was fouled. Freddie will come up to the free throw line. Now it's John Johnson. Sick man low. Jack wants to turn on Unsell. West is there. It's one on one. Clear out. Put down to the blonde glamour from Illinois Wesleyan. The Rainbow Man has this Landover, Maryland crowd in a frenzy right now. Here's Danbridge. Elvin will take it low, turn on, Sigma misses. Loose, run down by Dennis Johnson. On the dribble, he got past right. Danbridge comes with him. Dennis comes in with a field goal, and he's fouled. Score it for DJ Dennis Johnson out of Pepperdine. 88-85, Seattle. Williams and Elvin Hayes directing traffic, and Gus puts him at 90-85. It's a five-point Sonic lead. And there is the champagne. Inside the Seattle locker room as they close in on a world championship in Landover. They got to help everybody now. They know they're going to go to these guards. Gus hit a big shot a moment ago. They got to help. Double Barney up. Bickerstaff is out on the floor. Williams dishes the side. It's Dennis Johnson. Dennis, it's a four point lead. Gus set the line. Gus Williams. The Sonics leading by two, and now it's three in 12 seconds, and now you can feel it. That's the big one. All they got to do now in defense is put their hands in their pockets, give them a basket, but just drop it back down in the middle defensively, make them shoot outside, and do not commit a foul. That's a four-point lead in 12 seconds, and the bullets will quickly huddle up around Dick Mata now. They'll get down and fire quickly and try to pressure the inbounds pass. Meanwhile, the Sonics congratulating themselves over there in the corner, and I imagine folks all throughout the state of Washington and in Seattle, down to the great Northwest now, are reaching for the champagne. No question about that, Brent. They uh, richly deserved it when you could come away from home and win, and they've done it. We will be inside that Sonic locker room if they capture this championship. And there's nothing quite like the first one. And if Seattle can do it, they will become only the second team in the last 20 years to win the title after losing in the final round the previous year. Start the countdown. Ballard. Off with the shot. Sonics control from the corner. They don't even Six, have to come in. Front. Five, four, three, two, one. Let the celebration begin in Seattle. It is over. The Seattle Supersonics have won the NBA World Championship Series in five games, beating the Washington Bullets 97-93. But listen to the crowd in Landover. Listen to this display of sportsmanship. They're actually applauding everyone. Not a boo in this. Really applauding the play of both Seattle and the Bullets. Seattle now had its first major sports championship in the modern sports era. And the celebration continued long after the final buzzer. Dennis, I don't know if you realize that you were named the MVP. What are your feelings? Right now, I'm, I'm static. I really, I, I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy for the team. I'm happy for Seattle. Listen, it had to be a tough year for you. You you played so well last year. You lost in the seventh game, and up until that game, we all felt that you would have been the MVP in that series. And then you lost it, and yet you came back, had a great season, and here you are, and you've got it. Just determination. We thought we should have had last year, but we blew it. You know, uh, natural just blew it. We came back this year with a lot more determination, hustle, a lot more gusts, and we pulled it off. Uh, Paul, you've been there before. This team reminds me a great deal of the way you played together, the unity you have with the old Celtic team. Oh, yes, it is, Rick, but I tell you, this team was so young and so beautiful. I tell you, the guys really came through, never gave up, and I think this is the greatest one of all. Ah, you don't! <laughs> okay, well, congratulations to all of you. Let's go back to Brent Musburger. I'm taking a shower. <laughs> the champion in the NBA is the champion of the world. So the Seattle Supersonics are the new world champions. The championship of the world. And congratulations to the organization that put this team together. And Sam, 
Careful. Let me reach across here. What are your thoughts right now at this moment? Uh, friends, friends, I, I'm going to be in a state of euphoria for years to come. This has been one of my main goals in life, to win a championship. And I just give me another second or two. The achievements of the Seattle Supersonics start from the very top to the very bottom. And without uh, Azali Volchak, without the kind of staff we have, without 11 wonderful players, and the genius of Lenny Wilkins and Les Harbacher, the Seattle Sonics would be nothing. And let me just compliment the Bullets for one of the finest shows of basketball ever seen uh, in a championship. Thank you. Thank you, Sam, very much. Coach, Coach Wilkins, Tonight, as I looked across the way, and Rick made the observation, we'd never seen you quite this intense before during a ball game. You didn't want this to go back to a game six at all, did you? Well, Brent, we, we definitely did not want to go back to Seattle. We wanted to clinch it here, uh, to win it here. You know, the, the Bullets the true champions, and they beat us last year at home, and we kind of felt like we owed it back to them. But I think that's just good competitiveness between two of the greatest teams in the league. and I. You know, we wanted it. We all were emotionally involved in the game, and it was just a, a great basketball game. Emotions ran high from coast to coast. A sonic boom may have been heard from fans back in Seattle. Bring the fat lady to, lady to Seattle, and we'll introduce her to the Weedle. <laughs> the world's champion supersonics of Seattle, and everybody is going berserk. They're going up First Avenue, down First Avenue. Everybody in the world down here is honking their horn. The celebration in the streets didn't end that night. Seattle rolled out the red carpet and came out in force to support their world champions. The Seattle Supersonics with a great victory in that ball game and winning four straight from the Washington Bullets. And as we said, the crowd estimated by security forces at probably as much or possibly as much as 30,000. Nobody seems to really know, but I'll tell you, the crowd is just incredible. It, it was so unbelievable, you know, where we stayed, we had a lot of people that we knew, but when we, when I came back, I didn't know that those people were going to be there. And when I came back out, they were all there and just waving at me and, and everything, and it was just outstanding. You know, they parked us out on the tarmac somewhere, and you just looked outside, and there was just fans everywhere, you know, and uh, that's a great feeling. You know, we got to the airport and our plane had to go to a separate terminal because there were 20,000 fans at the airport. And then the parade, uh, there were over 200,000 fans. And the nice thing was that they didn't destroy anything. They were, <laughs> they, they were there to cheer the players on. And so it was wonderful memories. And I loved every minute of it. Players were greeted to roars as team owner Sam Shulman and head coach Lenny Wilkins greeted the Sonics faithful. We'll never probably see again until next year when we win it for the second time. You have a wonderful friend, and you have the greatest coach in the history of the NBA, Lenny Wilkins. Just a few statements. Last night we operated. The operation was successful. We removed the fat lady's console. Days later, the buzz from the city's first championship in decades lingered in the streets. Downtown Seattle swarmed with affectionate Sonic fans for over three hours Monday to see their heroes begin a three-mile parade from Pioneer Square to the University Square. The players appeared to ride on the shoulders of more than a quarter of a million people who lined the streets, the sidewalks, window sills, rooftops. The crowd around 4th and University stopped the parade and then moved up to 5th and University where the stage was set up. And whereas this team is neither a bird nor a plane but supersonic, now therefore I, Charles Royer, Mayor of the City, etc., do hereby proclaim Monday, June 4th, as Sonic Day in Seattle. You're really something, and like one of those dudes said, I don't know who said it, but we're going to return next year with another championship. Thank you. 
it's been a long time coming, and I know how all you feel, and I feel the same way as you do. Thank you very much. We deserve it. Are you ready? Give me an F! Give me an O! Give me an N! Give me an I! Give me a C! Give me an F! And although it's been four decades since that joyous and jubilant parade around Seattle, the fond memories remain top of mind for many on that championship team. It, it was unbelievable. I, I, I hadn't even done that. You know, I had won championships before, but not the way they were doing that. And it was just outstanding. And, and, and everybody just was there and, and, and wanted to do things with us. And, and uh, it, was, it was outstanding. It, it was just great. They were with us in 78 when we lost. It was, uh, it was amazing. You know, I like to say that was Seattle back in the good days. Uh, we used to um, practice over in Bellevue, and we used to get to the Kingdome in 15 minutes. Try that now. You know, you can't get across, can't get to the bridge in 15 minutes. So back then, the town was much more intimate, and I mean, wherever you went, they knew you, and they really embraced you. So it was great to back then. So now it's the best kept secret. It's out. Everybody and their brothers in Seattle now. 40 years later. That same Sonics team reunited in Seattle to celebrate the glory days and look ahead to when a reborn Sonics franchise returns to the Pacific Northwest. Now I, Dal Constantine, executive of King County, do hereby proclaim today, February 7th, 2019, to be Seattle Supersonics 1979 Champions Day in King County. And it's always fun to see the guys. I think I saw them like 10 years ago and we saw them at the 25 year reunion and stuff and I don't see enough of them. It's great to see Gus. We had a long dinner last night and he's a treat. It was a great ride. I, that's what this reunion is all about. I think that uh, there are some guys that I see two or three times a year. I come out from New York two or three times a year to play Lenny's golf tournament or Jacob Green's golf tournament. So I see them because they live here. But other guys like Dennis Archie, Paul Silas, uh, Dick Snyder, those guys I haven't seen in like 30, 40 years. So it's really good to see them. And we didn't miss a beat. I mean, we, we, get, we jumped right in and gave each other the business and started talking about the good old days. And it's a really great, special feeling. But for every reunion, the memories of those who are no longer with us live on. I mean, none of us are getting any younger. Uh, and we look back after 40 years and, and some of those, the JJs and the Lonnie's and those guys that, that aren't here. What are, what are some thoughts about those guys? Well, JJ, I played with him. So I knew what his abilities were. And, and I would tell our guys, Gus and Fred and Dennis, if JJ gets the ball, take off, because he'll find you. He could handle it, and, and he did. I would run a guard off of Paul that was close to me, mm -hmm. dogging me. He'd knock him down, and then he'd bend over with a big smile and help him up. <laughs> <laughs> I'd run him off of Lonnie Shelton, because I said, okay, I, I have to fix this. Run him off of Lonnie, Lonnie knock you down. Dare you to get <laughs> <laughs> DJ sticks with him. They go one on one. Dandridge to the shot in the glass. Sigma take it away, and it's on the end line. <laughs> well, it's ball. Uh, DJ's been MVP all all year. I mean, he's been consistent. He's been the player that we need. To, you know, nothing that really sets him apart except on his defense. You know, he we put him on their best um, offensive player, and he shut him down, and that helps us win the game. So. He was one of the first guards that really, well, I shouldn't say the first guards, you had the Jerry Wests and stuff like that, but he was a total force. You know, I mean, defensively, he was so tough. And, uh, you know, when Big Shot came, he wasn't afraid to take it. And so DJ was, you know, he was a great player. That's all I can say, just a great player. July 2nd, 2008 is known as one of the grimmest days in Seattle sports history. After a long legal battle, the Sonics' 41-year run in Seattle came to a close. 
One final thing. There's so much uncertainty right now. How are you handling this? And, and you're kind of the face of the franchise now. Do you, do you talk about this a lot, or are you just waiting to see what happens? No, I'm just waiting to see what happens. You know, I think it's uh, right around the corner to see what we're going to do next year. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to, you know, wherever we go. And uh, I just got to play the game and continue to work hard and, you know, help this team win. Would it bother you if you did leave Seattle, though? It would. You know, I love Seattle. You know, I've been here for a year. You know, my home is here. My family's moved out with me, and, you know, I love it here. You know, but uh, like I said, I have no control. You know, where we end up, we end up. Representatives from three NBA teams say they will support moving the team out of Seattle. Cairo 7 Eyewitness News reporter Chris Eggert is live with the latest developments, including statements made late this afternoon from NBA Commissioner David Stern. Chris? Well, Monique, it was Stern, it was the mayor of Oklahoma City, and it was also Sonics owner Clay Bennett all saying the same thing, essentially. It's not a matter of if Seattle will leave downtown Seattle, but when. Three members of the committee concluded that they would recommend to the relocation committee that it recommend that the franchise be permitted to relocate from Seattle to Oklahoma City. Tonight, that vote moves Seattle one step closer to losing the Sonics. In another vote, the NBA Board of Governors will be deciding the team's fate in New York City. They say time heals all wounds. Weasel! 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 But for Sonics fans, that couldn't be further from the truth. For him to think that somehow or another that everybody's forgiven and forgotten about that, the loss of the team, um, every time you see Oklahoma City play <laughs> in the NBA playoffs and everywhere else, you're reminded, you know, um, of the loss of the Sonics, and you're reminded who was responsible for that loss. A city searching for answers, starving for basketball, sits idle like the rush hour traffic it produces. We made our home here in Seattle. Our kids grew up here. Uh, this is a wonderful city. You've seen how it has taken off. It's the IT capital of the world and certainly deserves a basketball team. It's great, and it just goes to prove that, you know, Seattle needs a team back here. It's ridiculous. I think that um, everybody's been, I don't know, has it been 10 years since the Sonics? It's been 10 years, 8, 9, 10 years. So, I don't know, it's, it's coming, you know, it's coming and, and it's well, it would be well deserved because at the time when they moved, they were one of the best franchises in the NBA. So it didn't make business sense anyway. So I'm sure it's going to be here and, and when it happens, I'll be back in Seattle more often. I hope they get another team. You know, there's no town, no city in, in, in the, the country that deserves a team more than this does. You know, you're always going here, they're taking teams there, going to make us a world class City, this is a world class city. You know, you don't need the Sonics to make it world class, but it would really be nice to have a team back. They deserve it. Well, you know, when they got the team away from here, that was one of the worst things that I ever seen that had happened. And now it hasn't come back that long, but I just know it's going to happen, you know, and I'm, I'm hearing maybe one of the two teams that are out are going to come. And I just hope it does because when it does, I'm not going to come all the time, but I'm going to come here and watch this, this game and watch everybody play, play here. So it's going to be great. First off, I want to get a shout out to the Seattle Storm for holding it down and winning the championship. <laughs> Much love. On behalf of myself, NBA, and my organization, my teammates, we'd like to thank you guys for coming out and supporting us. I know it's been a rough 10 years. NBA is back in Seattle for tonight, but hopefully it's back forever soon. Whether or not a team ever returns to the Pacific Northwest remains a mystery, but the love for the Supersonics and Seattle as a whole is undeniable. I just i am happy with the city. When, you know, when I was here 12 years ago, and when I came back here, I couldn't believe that this city is unbelievable now. It, it's, it's, it is so great. <laughs> I told my wife, this is where we should have been. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what does this mean to you guys to come back together? I know you don't see each other all the time, uh, but, but Dick, come on in here too. What, what, is, what does this mean for you guys to come back and, and be together? Who knows how many more times you get to celebrate like this? What is that, what's, that, what's that mean? We're young again. <laughs> <laughs> for we just a few hours. We don't change that much. You know, like 40 years ago, yeah. Wally, Fred, everybody, 
is the same. The inflection, our thought patterns, and so you slide right into it again and you're comfortable, your family, you're young again. Yeah, you mentioned that up here, uh, family. It's family, it's family for us and uh, uh, it, it, it means the world, you know, and, and it's like we never change when we get together, you know, we're always, you know, communicating, you know, feeling good about each other. And, uh, you right. know, that'll never go You're away. Right. That'll never go away. Um, it's, uh, it's a blessing, really. It's a blessing. True. And uh, I, I, I'm very pleased, you know, to know some of these guys. <laughs> some, some of these guys. <laughs> I had the opportunity to watch and know the guys, many of them, from that 79 championship Sonics team. Um, we kind of grew up together. And so it was so much fun for me this morning to be with all of them at the Chihuly Glass Museum for their kind of recognition to the local press. Everybody looks a little older, but it's still a family. And a few weeks ago, I sat down with a cameraman uh, at the station, and he was just asking me a few questions. What do you remember about that 79 team? These were a couple of thoughts, and it was amazing to me how much we talked about that this morning, the guys themselves. A couple of thoughts on the 79 championship Sonics. Five, four, pass to Gus Williams. Three, two, one, and the Super Sonics win their first ever NBA championship. The ball sails high. There is something about winning a championship that makes everybody feel like they've had a little part to play in it. Seattle of 1979 was certainly not as big as it is now. We didn't have all the high rises. There was no such thing as Amazon. The city loved that team. We all went to those games. We rallied around them. They played terrific defense and they could score, but it was those people, those human beings that made that team so special. Lonnie Shelton was an enforcer. Guys are going to come driving the lane, not on Lonnie Shelton. You know, Gus was this guy out front who his nickname was the Wizard, and there was a reason for that. And yet he wasn't the MVP of the series. Dennis Johnson was the MVP of the series. And Johnny Johnson, who was as tough as nails. Jack was pulling down 12, 15, 18 rebounds a night. And then Fred would come in, blasting from outside. The team that, that Lenny built, he understood what good chemistry was. Those guys. That's what made that team great. You know, they were greeted when they came back to town with like 30,000 people. Here comes Sam Shulman with the trophy. Here's Lenny Wilkins with him as they come off the plane. And then there were 250,000 people in downtown Seattle for the parade. Everybody had yellow and green. It was a complete representation of who we are as a city by age, race, male, female, you name it. They were all out there. It's hard to believe it's been 40 years. There have been some of the guys who passed away. You don't get to feel it enough, but maybe that's what makes it so special, is that when it does come along, you know it, and you want to make it happen again. Nothing brings a city together like a championship. You're watching a supersonic special, celebrating 40 years a champion. Cairo 7 presents 40 years a champion. I had come back to Seattle. I had worked for CBS for a year. <laughs> and I was at a dinner. It was a big dinner they used to have every year. And Sam Schulman was chasing me around the room, trying to convince me to uh, take the job with the Sonics, so I did. And I said, but there's a couple of things, okay? The first thing was they had a trade in the works for Fred Brown, and I blocked it. I told him, no, we can't do it. I said, it wasn't comparable. You know, that trade was not a good trade, and we'd be giving up too much. So Sam said, fine, whatever you want to do. I said, okay. So we blocked that trade, then I made the other trade for Tom Burleson, uh, for Marvin Webster, and, uh, and I made them, uh, we gave them, I forget what it was, a fourth round pick. Wilkerson was again. Yeah, Wilkerson, Bobby Wilkerson. Yeah, and I got Paul, and I got uh, uh, 
Willie Wise. Willie Wise. <laughs> right. That's right. And I said, these guys will give us experience. Okay. They'll help our bench because we, we didn't, you know, we were too young. So we got that going. And then uh, when the draft, coach was getting a little weak need about selecting Jack. And, uh, and I said, no, no. I said, hey, let me tell you something. Because I, I was at Kansas City. He didn't even know it, you know. And I watched him play. And I said, we're getting a guy that's going to give us double-figure rebounds, double-figure points. And I said, and if he gets to the foul line, he's going to make 8 out of 10, you know. And so, so, you know, Sam went along with me. I mean, he really let me do all that. Then I picked up Gus. Uh, I uh, agreed to uh, San Francisco, didn't want to pay his deferred income. And so I said, how much was it? And when I found out how much it was, I, sa I said, we make the deal. And then I told Sam. <laughs> but, 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 you know, it, everything just went together. And these guys supported one another, you know. Uh, Wally also. We, we got Wally. I got Wally and JJ well, from Portland. That That's right. They had All as of a champions. Sudden our bench right. now had guys who could come in and contribute. Did you guys did you guys realize the kind of chemistry when you were first when you were first here? Did it take some time during the course of the season to figure out what it was that he already saw? That that chemistry that you guys had. I'll just say that I, I thought Lenny put together a, a wonderful mix of young players with some veterans. I mean, Fred and JJ and Paul had been around for a while, and this was that first year before he went to the, uh, won the championship. He had Dick Snyder and Dennis Autry after that. And we had, you know, Gus and DJ and I and Wallet. We're trying to establish our careers. And uh, I just remember it was always very competitive practices. I thought, I, I don't know if I've ever been in a team that got better as, as much in their practices as we have. We had guys stepping in every day and going at each other and trying to get better. It was better, but things weren't good before he came. <laughs> we, we, we were bad. <laughs> and he came, and uh, I started, and uh, he said, uh, I want you to go down and then come back up. I said, right on. You know, because when, when I started, it wasn't good at all, <laughs> you know. So when I came back up, it was outstanding, and we just played so much better, and we did so good, you know. He he, he was outstanding. Can, can I talk about that first meeting, because you referenced it yeah. earlier today, in Kansas City. We're all sitting around, we're 5 and 17, you know, terrible record, but we're getting killed. It's not just when we've got a bad record, we're not in games. And like, yeah. looks at the players in the room and said, I got confidence, you guys. You guys are good players. We're gonna have a good team. You're like, you know, saying, is there somebody else behind us? You know, you know, are, you, are you talking to us? But he gave us confidence in a way that we didn't think we were any good. But he changed that. You were the veteran. You were the leader on that team. What did you see in this group? Not much. <laughs> Not much at really? all. Yeah, it was very difficult trying to get them to get up to speed <laughs> on everything. Um, uh, it was but, hard. But, you know, before he goes on, <laughs> let, me, let me tell you something. You know, no, no. He, he was starting. No. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Was. He, he and uh, Slick. And so I said, I talked to Fred. In the, I said, hey, you could give us a dimension off the bench no other team has. I, no, he probably don't did. remember. No, but, it's true. It's and true. It's true. Me and you, we no, started. It's true. Yeah, How tough was that? Yeah. Yeah. No, it was it was easy because Lenny and I had the conversation, and um, you know it made all the sense in the world to me because we had a young Gus Williams and a young Dennis Johnson, and um, those guys could get out there. And, and and a young Lonnie Shelton because yep. you talked about see, that's it, exactly and we right. said let those guys that's get exactly out there right. and tire them out, and then that's we come it. in and, and we, we come and in and we get it done. <laughs> we get, we get it <laughs> you were tricking <laughs> people way back then. <laughs> right. You that's were right. tricking <laughs> them way back then. <laughs> no. No. And no. I would have the ball, right. and I would want to shoot, and he would grab it from me and say, "Uh, -uh. <laughs> you'll never shoot again." <laughs> Everybody. Everybody knew their jobs. Yes. Everybody oh, yeah. knew their responsibility. Oh, yeah. it, it was outstanding. You know, and, and, and that's another beauty that Lenny had. And think, remember this. Everybody on our team knew everybody's assignment and where they were supposed to be on what cadence that we did it. So if there was a mishaps, 
then we knew what was supposed to be there, and everybody would just fall right in the place. Can I say we really talk well on defense? Gus and Fred. Yeah. Hill. Here, Gus. Hill. They <laughs> <laughs> talk so clearly. Is that right? Defensive possession. Oh. Come on in here, Gus. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was team defense. Yeah, you're That's what killed. you did. You're communicating. Team. It was communication on defense, right? <laughs> well, first of all, anything Fred was saying, take with a grain of salt. Okay? But it's, I've been listening to you guys. It's been great. I think the thing that really separates us from most teams, and I don't know if there was a scientific study of this, but if you like your teammates or you have a certain bond with your teammates, does that necessarily mean, does that translate to winning? I don't know, but it didn't hurt us. That's all I can say. And when you look at you, you come back all the time. You guys have been back, stayed, business, all the rest. You also liked where you were you like to come back to this city because regardless of whatever else you guys did in your careers, you wore those colors and it had Seattle on the front. And that still means something, I assume, yeah. to all of you guys. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, this is our community. This is what we did. And, you know, the, the fans were outpouring to us and we wanted to outpour back to them, you know, the love. When you look back, does it seem like it's been 40 years? Really? The joints, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mine says no. <laughs> Jack? Um, yeah, there's there's some moments when it's it's 40 years, but uh, you know, what did it take us, you Long know, an uh, hour, hour, two hours to get right back to where we were 40 years ago? What we're doing now, we, we did all the time, was jabbing each other. I think it started committed to each other whenever. I think whatever. it started right away when we said hi, right? Yeah, we, we pretty close. Other, right? So uh, I was the one that was holding back. Once again, you know, I was leading the way for the team. You were what you do? You were passing it's again. It's what you yeah. do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Were there any uh, really clips of that, Fred passing? Uh, no, not, not, not many. many. <laughs> not many. <laughs> so, well, well, do what you do best. Last play, by the way, we love the we love the wide collars and the big hair. Uh, last play of the game. Game clock winds down. You throw the ball up in the rafters. Stupid. What's the What's the thought? On the that on the bench cool. and on the floor. First of all, that was a bad move. If it I knew how important that and valuable that value was, <laughs> 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 I would have never threw it out like you that. You never saw it again. No, no, no. no. So what's what's it feel like on the floor to win a championship? You know you're the best in the game at that moment. What's that feel like? You remember we were talking. We knew we had it going down the stretch. We knew we had broke their hearts and said all we got to do is stay the course. And, uh, and we just executed. We executed, we made them make some turnovers, and uh, it was easy. We, you remember we were sitting there, we were talking, said, we got them. Yeah. We got them. Because we thought we would win the, the year before also. Yeah. And uh, this time it was just outstanding that we, that we did it. I was going to say, did that set the table? Well, what's what you the did table, the year before? Yeah, that set the table. Yeah. But what was special this year is that we lost the first game. We everybody did. forgets that. Yeah. And you know, everybody started getting nervous. But yeah. we as a team said, we're not gonna get nervous. We're gonna win the next one. Well, how about we were down three two in Phoenix in the Western Conference Finals? Uh, uh, yeah, that's that's true. true. Yeah. yeah. We were. What's her name saying the yeah. uh, <laughs> national anthem? Paul Westwell. Paul Westwell's yeah. mom saying yeah. the national anthem. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, what'd you say? <laughs> no way. <laughs> 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 so, so we, we knew, and uh, we came out there and won four straight, you know, uh, beat them right. on their court. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and of course, that night, uh, we wished we were in Seattle sure. to be a part of the celebration, but it was okay because we knew we were going home as a winner. Yeah. When you got, Steve, yeah. Steve for me, uh, added incentive was that summer after we lost in 78, that was the worst summer. Just going back and you know, I was back home in New York and people was talking, you should have won this. That was a terrible. So that was adding incentives and we just couldn't wait. So we didn't think about playoffs. Our mindset coming back our next year, we'll be in the championship again. It was just a big plus that it was against the bullets to, to revenge. It. So it's sweet. What's interesting here is having done what I've done with the Seahawks all these years, when we go to the Super Bowl, I'm hearing the same stories. The mindset of players from the year before going into that championship year, they felt exactly the same way, that yeah. this is our year. We know what now it takes to get back there. Um, 
Did he ever raise his voice to you guys? Did he ever scream at you guys? Yell at you guys? He did say gosh darn one time. Did he really? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he's serious. Yeah. <laughs> it was more, he gets stern. Yeah? Yeah. But it, it wasn't, it wasn't it was, raising his voice. No, so it was, it, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was that tone, you know, it was like. We didn't get, we didn't get him much, though. We didn't get him much. Yeah, okay, we get he it. He his voice. We got it. All the time. 39 yeah. on the bench. Oh, yeah? Uh, 39. <laughs> well, if it wasn't for him, yeah. we wouldn't be good. Yeah. <laughs> And the thing was, you don't have to 39 raise your voice that much. <laughs> but like you were going to come sit next to me, yeah. and we were going to talk about it. So I mean, you know, it's a. I mean, I knew they knew exactly what I was talking about. Yeah. So uh, we prepared, like uh, Jack was saying. I, our practices, uh, we oh. worked on stuff. Oh. Come on, oh, you know, oh. you talk about uh, if we were going to trap or rotate or whatever, everybody right, knew right. what they were supposed to do. I mean, our yeah. practice is Steve, I'm telling you, Gus and I, we would enter the pass into these guys, Lonnie and Paul, oh. or, 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 or Jack yeah. or Dennis or somebody. I mean, these guys were going at it. Our best games were in practice at, at 12 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> they were just beating the crap out of each other. So we knew, like, man. I mean, remember we used to stand out there saying, these guys crazy or what? <laughs> well, and then you had some big enforcers, oh, these guys yeah, back yeah, here, yeah. too, that would come in and, uh, and, and hammer on guys. Uh, what about the, the guys that are no longer with us, the brothers that, uh, that played with you that helped win that championship? Yeah. I mean, none of us are getting any younger. Uh, and we look back after 40 years and, and some of those, the JJs and the Lonnie's and those yeah. guys that, that aren't here. What are, what are some yeah. thoughts about those guys? Well, J.J., I played with him, so I knew what his abilities were. And, and I would tell our guys, Gus and Fred and Dennis, if J.J. gets the ball, take off, because he'll find you. He could handle it, and, and he did, you know. And, and, and you know, uh, I remember uh, putting J.J. on Bobby Dandridge. Right. Right. And Bobby Dandridge was crying Couldn't because Jay, Jay crying and foul all the time. Right. You know, I tell the story. Uh, this is a true story for me. For I tell the story. That <laughs> for, for the rest when of the I, No, no, no. <laughs> you know, guards that would used to be, you know, getting close to me because I come in, I would, you know, had to make a couple of baskets in our rotations or whatever. Um, I would run a guard off of Paul that was close to me, mm -hmm. dogging me. He knock him down, and then he bend over with a big smile and help him up. <laughs> I run him off of Lonnie Shelton because I said, "Okay, I, I fix this." Run him off of Lonnie. Lonnie knock you down. He dare you to get up. <laughs> he dare you to get up. So the guy said, "Fred, what are you doing?" Man, I said, "Well, get back." <laughs> you know, true story. <laughs> oh, it's great as a guard to have guys that he was saying because they tried to put that pressure defense on you yeah. and you got your pick of the litter. You got yeah. Jack, Seven you got Street, Jacks. Lonnie, Paul, Dennis, Dennis, and those guys instead of putting up and they looking behind you like yeah. who's coming and it makes your job a lot easier. And I'm glad you brought that up. You guys were the best defensive team right. Right. in the NBA that no season. One, no one knows that. The right. best <laughs> defensive team. Help, 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 help. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 that was as, just as important as the shots that he made and, no and, and the, the no ball handling of Gus, the defense that you played. All of that is so important. And when you put a team together, you, you want to make sure you have that. And we were very fortunate, you know, because Marvin Webster, who was with us, signed uh, with the Knicks. And they had to give compensation. And they wanted to give me uh, Bob McAdoo, and I said, no, I wanted Lonnie Shelton. Because I had seen him play at Oregon. And I knew what he could do, you know. And so that just added to our defense. And, and you know, and we got these guys that came to protect, to set good screens. I mean, when you ran off a screen, you knew it. Not like today, you know. But uh, yeah, and, and we tra transition. <laughs> transition was such a big part of our offense. Right. And yes. you, you talked about right. JJ uh, being able to handle it. We had yeah. three guys that we got the rebound. We turned around and looked, and any of those three guys you could hit, and it, it was a fast break. So uh, getting defensive stops were really a key, not just for us as a defensive team, but offensively. 
I have monopolized you guys too much, but the last question, and I just want to, anybody that wants to take a couple of shots at it, want to anybody, anybody, anybody. yeah, Tom. The trophy, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? We, we, we won the game, won the series, won the championship, we got the trophy, we all went to the uh, locker room, everybody's drinking champagne, beers, everybody dresses, leaves. I walk, I'm, I'm starting to walk out, I'm the only one left, the trophy's there. Yeah. And I said, I better take this so the janitor doesn't get it. That's what happened. That's what happened. Yeah. That's, yeah. 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 That's the story and you're sticking to it. Fred, you help me with storytelling? <laughs> before, before I let you guys go, and I, we will see you all tonight, and, and really, on behalf of everybody who's a fan and a friend uh, that we've known each other for 40 years, thank you guys for all coming back. What does this mean to you guys to come back together? I know you don't see each other all the time, uh, but but Dick, come on in here too. What, what, is, what does this mean for you guys to come back and, and be together? Who knows how many more times you get to celebrate like this? What is that? What's that? What's that mean? We're young again. <laughs> for just a few hours. Don't change that much, you know? Like 40 years ago, Wally, Fred, everybody. It was the same, the inflection, our thought patterns, and so you slide right into it again and you're comfortable, your family, you're young again. Yeah, you mentioned that up here, um, family. It's family, it's family for us, and uh, uh, it, it, it means the world, you know, and, and it's like we never change when we get together, you know, we're always, you know, communicating, you know, feeling good about each other. And, uh, you know, right. that'll never go You're away. Right. That'll never go away. Um, it's, uh, it's a blessing, really. It's a blessing. True. And uh, I, I, I'm very pleased, you know, to know some of these guys. <laughs> some, <laughs> some of these guys. Yeah. Yeah. Those were truly fabulous memories. Thanks so much for being with us, helping us celebrate 40 years of champion, the golden age of Supersonics basketball. If you'd like to learn more about the Sonics 40th anniversary, just head to Cairo7.com. Meantime, I'm Steve Rabel. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you for watching this Supersonic Special, celebrating Seattle's one and only NBA championship.